Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, happy Spotify rap season or don't shit December, whatever you celebrate. Technically it is January when this video is getting released. So a lot of you have probably already mentally moved on from the holidays. And yeah, some of you probably finally took a dump, but fuck it. Let's go back for a minute and review my personal holiday season as we've been doing for six years now. I know that I said that I wasn't gonna do another one of these, but here we are anyway. So I guess I'm just a liar and you can't trust anything I say ever. So I'm basically a politician. This holiday season was a bit of a letdown, if I'm being honest. There was certainly quite a bit going on, but I pretty much just worked and worked and then worked some more until I threw my hands up and said fuck it and just went home for the holidays. Of course, I also shot some ectochrome, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Doing YouTube is my full-time job now, so in this video, I'm pretty much just running all over the place like my ass is on fire. You know, stuff like going to events, shooting campaigns, and even doing some action-packed editing that'll leave you on the edge of your seat. This video truly has it all. This joyous time of year began with our dog, Baxter, doing what he does every day, sleeping on the human couch, and occasionally throwing tantrums when he feels like his sacred presence is being ignored. Uh, got a new camera so I can actually see myself in screen. I still look pretty bad. Ectochrome Christmas. Maybe this year I have a new appreciation for Ectochrome. This year I'm gonna be shooting with my Contax T2. Uh, I have not shot with it all year. That camera is basically uh, ice, like bling. You know what I mean? Water. Because I haven't shot with it all year, the battery is currently dead. So let's replace that. Dude, I swear I can never find a quarter when I need it. What should I do with the old battery? That's right, toss it in the ocean. Good to go. Let's put some film in it. Try to ignore the mess, but if you've been watching for a while, you know that my office is always like this. This year on the podcast, we're doing like a holiday special. The podcast is Mami Amigos, if you're not following along. Um, I hate you. And we're doing like a white elephant sort of thing. So I got a gift here. So it's a shirt that says, I'm not afraid to go to hell. I've eaten at Arby's. Whoa, frame change. The lighting's a little bit better here. Tonight, we're going down to San Clemente, California for the release party of Phoenix 200. Today is the 30th of November. Phoenix comes out tomorrow. All this is film. I'm gonna be going to Spain, the big España, in uh, a couple of days, literally right after the event in San Clemente. Getting on a plane, flying over to Spain for like a commissioned project. Yeah, so you see this shit? I need to de-thaw. This Sinistil BWXX roll was like literally stuck up here in the ice, like Luke Skywalker on the ice planet Hoth. Charger because I'm done. So I still love you. Probably. Uh, yeah, so this year Monica was going to give the old film thing a go. She shot a little bit and even did some developing in high school, but has since strayed from the path. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing though. You're gonna have to walk me through this. <laughs> well, first you need a roll of film. My God. I wanted to start her new journey off with 8x10, but I decided to go easy on her and just lent her my Minolta Freedom Zoom point and shoot. And after watching all my videos over the years, she was a total natural. Yeah. Okay, I think. Ah. The Continental Breakfast, AKA the poo stopper that morning started off pretty strong not only did Harmon release their new surprise color film phoenix 200 but uh some of the folks from the factory tour that i did not too long ago were in town as well and we all got a tour of the dark room they even very kindly turned on the lights and we got to see their dip and dunk processors and the forbidden but oh so tempting chicken noodle soup that develops all of our film <laughs>
I had an errand to run this morning, but uh, that's over with. I just bit my tongue. Still got some extra chrome I need to smash out, so let's do it. What the f**k? That was a really f**k long story. No way that's gonna turn out. After all that, it was um, honestly, it was pretty chaotic. We rushed home and then rushed to the airport to board an international flight to Spain, where I, jet lagged to the very core of my being, shot for six days straight, some of the most beautiful occasions I've ever been in my entire life. There were ups and downs as per usual, but it was a total sprint to the metaphorical finish line and we made it. Leg cramps, fatigue, diarrhea and all. On our last night out in Spain, we went out with some friends and got, you know, totally obliterated. So the three connecting flights back to LA were pretty rough the next day. And well, that's where we basically just reached connect with our main plot line. What's up? Um, we just got back from Spain last night. The jet lag is starting to, is starting to get to me, I think. I shot like 30 something rolls of film when I was in Spain, over five days. It's gonna be very crazy. I have to turn around these 30 rolls of film in like less than two weeks i think something like that so i'm trying to figure out the best way to uh you know split up the the workload between labs and just make sure everything gets done on time the problem is there's some ecn2 in there there's e6 there's c41 and then there's uh some black and white that's been pushed there's a whole bunch of stuff and not one lab can do all that tomorrow i'm gonna run to 35m pro i haven't used them before but i'm trying them out because uh, they can develop C41 in like less than 24 hours, which is uh, quite nice for a project like this. My friend Joey was selling off some uh, uh, some HP5 in 8x10. So I bought it off of him. Should get that in soon. Man, I don't know. I'm just drawing a blank. Probably because it's like 4 a.m. in Spain right now. I ordered uh, Monica's uh, Christmas present today. I got her a uh, Steam Deck. I don't think she would kind of spend that kind of cash on herself, you know? She loves to play uh, Stardew Valley and Starbound. So the other day when I realized I haven't shot my Contacts T2 all year, I also realized I haven't shot 8x10 all year either. I think the last time I shot 8x10 was last Christmas. I'll try to have more functional brain activity tomorrow. Hey, what's up? Welcome to my car. We got a bunch of errands to run this morning. I got to drop off a lens at UPS. It was a lens that uh, my friend Juan let me borrow. The Voigtlander 35mm 1.5. I used it for a lot of low light stuff. I got to drop off this big ass package for the dark room. Um, and then I'm also going to run by 35M Pro. There we go. All right, jet lag update. I still am it. Got a lot done today. Kind of. It's only 6.30. Um, I think I mentioned at some point I haven't shot any 8x10 this year, so I think I'm gonna kind of do a bit more of that in 2024. I'm kind of 
starting to figure out how I don't know that sounds dumb <laughs> I definitely have some other stuff planned for 2024 some big stuff that's gonna alter the course of history no it is not and that's definitely way too much to promise Baxter says hi I don't know why he does this. Monica got me this in uh, in Spain. It's a, yeah, it's a pen that uh, is the poo thing. Yo, back in the film drop off express, making my daily run to the lab to develop more Spain stuff, more Spain film, I guess. I went to a party last night and I felt like a bit of a zombie. I'm like deathly afraid to look behind me. There's probably at least five Coke Zero bottles back there. Not filled with like piss or anything, just um, cause I've been drinking them to for like caffeine. Um, today is the 15th. Ordered some gifts for my mom last night. I still don't know what I'm gonna get my brother. Every time I ask him, he just calls me dumb. I just got a package from Joey, friend of the channel. Ooh, wow. Here's the HP5. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, FP4 with more. Ugh. Gotta wipe that off, man. And then uh, he sent me this. So uh, that unmarked roll was actually x-ray film that Joey sent me. I'm not a radiologist and I've never shot x-ray film and I don't really know much about it other than it's black and white. If anyone has any tips on how to shoot it and how to develop it, let a play a know. Also, I got my Cinestill 400 Daddy in 4x5 as I'm sure you also did if you ordered it. After that, Monica was packing up to uh, go back home and leave me with Baxter, which meant it was going to be party time at the apartment. No girls around to make the rules and tell us when we can and can't eat kibble. He wants to see you. I, I, see I know, boy. he's the star. Oh boy, that's an angle. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll own property and be able to put up decorations and yeah. have fun. This house is definitely haunted. Ugh. Dropped Monica off at the airport last night. So now it's just me and Baxi. He's being a little needy right now because it's five o'clock, which means it's just about his dinner time. And he's always a little bit nicer around dinner time. I got in the box from a glass key photo. So let's pop it open. I don't even remember when I ordered this, to be honest with you. That looks pretty good to me, I think. I just finished the uh, first batch of film, it was like six rolls? No, 12 rolls. It was 12 rolls of 120. I got some more black and white 120 coming in this evening. I haven't even started the 35. I think I'm gonna start that tonight, but um, yeah. Just woke up made some coffee, ready for the work day to begin. The past four days have been nothing but photo editing, video editing. I've basically been glued to my computer. Probably less than 200 steps a day, you know what I mean? I've put a good uh, dent in it, but I still feel like I'm only 30% of the way through. Tomorrow, uh, we're gonna go record a podcast, sort of an emergency podcast. Today we were supposed to record, I was uh, brutally sick of course. So we're just going to do a uh, Caleb and Jason podcast tomorrow. And then I'm thinking Saturday we head up to the bay. That'll be the 23rd. So cutting it a bit close. I still have to get my brother a gift. I'm thinking REI gift card. I know that that's kind of a uh, non-thoughtful gift, but f*** it. He makes more money than me, probably. He's getting a gift card. Okay, I'm giving myself a hard deadline 
tonight, 11 p.m. Right now it's 8.30. Uh, the deadline is to finish these images and then just cut it off for the time being. Fun times. Yeah, I feel like I've just been redlining it for the past two weeks. I guess I'll just finish up these photos and hit the road. Bring the Contacts T2 with me and try and finish up that roll of Ektachrome. I'll also bring Baxter. <laughs> Do you think if uh, you got abducted by aliens? Yeah, and, sure. And you were like, Lauren, I just got abducted by aliens. Do you think she'd believe you instantly? <laughs> oh, I mean, we're married now, so I think, I think, uh, I think, I uh, know. Yeah, no, I don't think Monica would believe me either. I, I don't know what's going on. I feel huh. pretty though. Yeah, so anyway, I basically got as much work done as I humanly could, but I was still quite backlogged, wise and work-wise. Enough was enough though, and I really shouldn't miss Christmas with my family, so I hit the road due north because I knew my mom was making her legendary gooey butt cake, which always gives me heart palpitations, but you know what? It's always oh so worth it. If you can uh, name in the comments every song playing in my car during the drive up based on only these brief clips here, then you will have unlocked possibly the greatest reward known to mankind, my respect. About halfway, I stopped for gas, food, and to walk my dog pig. I bust out the contacts T2 and even took a photo or two because gas stations are so photogenic on film, as we all know. Eventually, I did make it to Northern California with the most precious thing in my life. That's right, my contacts T2. And yeah, Baxter, I guess. We got to work looking for food, sleeping, and taking camel-sized dumps in the backyard. Time for some content, some holiday content. ABC, always be holiday contenting. Gift card for my brother, kind of smashed because it's been in my wallet, which has been in my ass. Biggest bag we have. Just remember the litter box is for your cat, not you. Your quilt of all those animals howling looks like um, they all stepped on like a Lego or something. <laughs> that night, instead of getting totally blasted on whatever creative alcoholic concoction we can come up with, we decided to head out and take a stroll through this holiday light display thing that my mom had heard about. Does the ectochrome in this video look a little bit different to you? Maybe. So I read up a little bit on ectochrome. I was just kind of looking for a, an alternative way to scan it or shoot it. Just something, some kind of new look, you know? I've been shooting it for six years now and I've just never really fallen in love with it. As you probably already know, 
Traditional Ektachrome has sort of a purple blue cast to it, quite a significant one if you ask me. And because of that, it was, you know, never really my favorite film stock. Throw in the usual Kodak high price tag and well, you can see why I didn't really shoot it too much. Anyway, after a little bit of internet digging, some people online have speculated that the bluish cast exists on this film because it's a slide film and was meant to be projected. Like for example, how people used to go on vacation, shoot a bunch of slides and then come home, invite their friends over to sit in their living room while they projected these slides onto the wall and showed them their vacation. It sounds pretty lame, right? I mean, who wants to go over to a friend's house to watch basically a PowerPoint presentation of somebody else's vacation? Not me. Don't invite me to that shit. But I guess, I don't know, back in the day, people were constantly bored and that sounded like fun to them. Because I guess back then they didn't have the uh, totally sick stuff that we do nowadays, like Xbox, 20 minute pizza delivery, and online blackjack. These old slide projectors used light bulbs that let off a very warm color temperature. So the theory here is that the blue in Ektachrome is sort of a holdover from back in the day and it's there to kind of balance out the warmth from the light from the projector. Is that true? I don't know, probably not because I read it on the internet, but let's try it anyway. The color temperature of the light table that I use for scanning is 6500 Kelvin and uh, I'd want to get it down to about 3200 Kelvin to simulate the color temperature of a tungsten light bulb. Luckily for me there is a lighting gel called the 204 full CT that I can place between the suspended ectochrome and the light source when scanning to rebalance the color temperature down quote unquote accordingly. Does it make a difference in the scans? Yeah totally. A good difference though? Well I suppose that's subjective. It's certainly warmer which is nice. I mean it's not going to save a shit photo that you shot in the middle of the day, but otherwise, yeah. The default blue ectochrome overwash can really take control sometimes, and I think this effectively eliminates that. Anyway, unfortunately, real life eventually came calling and real life in reality sucks. I still had a mountain of work I need to catch up on. So on the 26th, I drove two times the speed limit back to Southern California with old backseat Baxter. How does Emma Chamberlain do it? Baxter had his dinner about 30 minutes ago, but that's not gonna stop him from wanting my dinner as well. Should be back home in about three hours or so. And uh, I guess I'm just gonna do some more scanning and editing tonight. I got some film in while I was gone. Okay, Whew. man, I look like I have a huge head. Been home for uh, maybe about an hour. I've kind of been scrambling around, rushing around because one of the two packages of film I was waiting on, developed film from uh, from Spain. One of the two packages says it was delivered in or at my mailbox, but it ain't in or at my mailbox anywhere. I've like quadruple checked. I'm gonna go in tomorrow and see if uh, they know anything. Kind of sucks. Seven rolls of film from Spain. That was like 25% of what I shot. Lost rolls of film update. I went to the post office this morning. They don't know what happened to it. Basically, they called me about an hour ago and were like, we delivered it to the wrong unit. So uh, I went over there, they're not home. I left a note on their door. Guess I'll update you when, uh, if that gets resolved. Man, all right, so still no package. This whole thing has been, been a saga. It seems like nobody knows what happened to this package. Courier says it was delivered to my neighbor. Neighbor was incredibly nice. They say that they haven't seen it. Courier also said that the label was misprinted. We found a, I guess they photograph every package that comes through the USPS. They photographed the label. The label was not misprinted, so I don't know. Which really sucks because seven rolls of film for a commission project. What's up? It has been a very interesting couple of days. I went to the building manager and asked if we could look at the security camera footage. Turns out package was delivered by the US Postal Service just as it should be a couple hours later. Uh, somebody, I mean, took it. They stole it, basically. Very frustrating because as soon as they opened the package, they probably saw it has no value to them and then they just 
probably threw it away. It's been about five days. I don't really think I'm going to see that package. Yeah, it just really sucks because it was uh, seven rolls of developed film from Spain. Medium format, 35 millimeter film stocks that are no longer made anymore. It was Ektachrome Panther 50 and Retrochrome. I don't know. I'm just feeling kind of uh, defeated right now. I don't want this video to end on a bad note. Baxter's not going to see a chance of you kicking it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome back to uh, my messy office. I'm about to go out and shoot a video with Caleb. We're going out to the desert again. Pretty standard formula for my videos at this point. Um, like I said earlier in this video, I have not shot any 8x10 this year, so it is going to be an 8x10 video. We have uh, two sheets of Portra 400 left over. I think I'm just gonna kill them off. We also have some uh, FP4 here. It expired in 96. And then we've got good old HP5 with uh, shit stains on it. Pushed to 1600, which is kind of an odd move on 8x10, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll get it done. That might be the end of uh, Ectochrome Christmas this year. Was it fun? It's never fun. <laughs> but uh, if it's fun you wanna have, real fun, then why not build a website through today's sponsor, Squarespace? If you're new to Squarespace, let's fill you in. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that turns over the control to you and your own capabilities to build a website that surpasses even your wildest dreams. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates and get to work building your visionary website with something called Fluid Engine, which allows you to drag and drop pieces of your content to display with ease on desktop and even on mobile if that's your jam. I've been using Squarespace for years now to host my own photography portfolio, and now that I have new work coming in, in in bulk from a recent commission project, I'm going to get to work rearranging my own website to show off my favorite pieces from that project. As a photographer trying to emerge in the industry, I'd personally say having an online portfolio is one of the most important aspects of getting hired and spreading your work out to the masses. Additionally, if you reach the point where you'd like to begin selling prints, photo books, Polaroids, etc., you can even scale up your website with Squarespace's modern tools to build an online store to sell all of your work. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So that's that. I can't believe I've been doing this series for six years now. I thought for sure I would be done after last year, but it just keeps coming back like gonorrhea. I do kind of feel like new life has been breathed into the series a little bit. Ektachrome is still not really my go-to film stock, but with this new technique for scanning, it certainly makes it a lot more interesting. But it also presents its own challenges too, I suppose. Film photography is all about challenges and then, you know, overcoming them. Which makes me wonder why we even do this in the first place. I was uh, quite a bit happier with the Ektachrome shots on this go around, and I can even see myself using Ektachrome again in the future, now that I've sort of, you know, cracked the code. It only took six years. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed another year of a uh, slice of Jason's holiday life, and uh, we'll see you next year, maybe, if you're lucky. If I do Ektachrome Christmas 7, should I split it into two installments like they did with the Harry Potter franchise? I guess I'd have to actually find interesting stuff to do. Holy I know. So the craziest thing just happened. I just got back from a movie, Yorgos Lanthimos, poor things, shot on X-Chrome, not important. Uh, Monica got a call on her cell phone asking if somebody named Jason lives in this apartment. Of course I do. We let the person in the front gate and he hands me, I guess like just an unmarked box. I didn't really make much of it because that's just kind of how deliveries go sometimes. And uh, so I open it up and it's film and I'm like, oh, okay, well I ordered. I did just send some film off that I should be getting any day now. But I look closer at the film and guess what? It's rolls and rolls of my stolen film. I don't know who this guy was. He said, sorry for the confusion or the mix up or something at the door. And I was like, I didn't really know what he was talking about. He didn't have any postal service or any like uniform on or anything like that i don't know it was kind of a strange thing but inside the box is just all my rolls my lost rolls from spain so um that's good well i guess now that means i have more work to do